right, boys and girls, we are definitely in for a treat today. Welcome to another episode Ooh. of the Witching Hour podcast. I'm your host, John Royce. One with me today, young Hi. man, everybody knows his face nowadays, Mr. Elliot Fullman. How are you? I am doing good. How about you? I'm I'm better now that I'm talking with you. I really appreciate you getting back to me. So, boys and girls, um, yes. I actually met Elliot by dumb luck at a convenience store gas station about a block away from my house this past weekend while he and his family uh his his mom and dad who i got to meet great people and of course i got to run in and say hello to josie as well you guys were on your way to dc i believe because you had a show that night yes i did yeah it was fun times saw the uh, pictures it looked great oh yeah it, it was it was definitely a fantastic show and I see some of Josie's paintings behind you. She's definitely got her own style, man. She's she's got such talent. Thank you, but this this one's actually my mom's. My mom is it really? Her. Yeah, uh, this is my mom's. But she, Josie has been painting. She's she was just working on one uh, just a second ago, right? Right when I last saw her. No, I actually I was scrolling through uh, the Little Punk People's page and saw some of her work. Uh, Raining Blood, th the title, of course, is my favorite, but I really I really enjoy that. My wife and I were actually both looking through them, and a uh, very talented young lady. Awesome, uh, thank so you. So please, please send her our best. Um, the, the tender age of 20, musician, actor, anything else you're aspiring to be? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess kind of a little bit of like content like i try to do fun goofy stuff on instagram tiktok just for fun right like talk about music or whatever but mainly uh my my priorities are musician and actor okay and so obviously everybody knows the face like i said from terrifier 2 <laughs> uh we are all looking forward to terrifier 3 um yes. anything that you can Phil, I said, well, actually, let's, let, let's not jump ahead of myself here. Um, with Terrifier 2, how was that with the process of auditioning, uh, going for the role itself? It was actually kind of, I'm, I'm a huge nerd. I love horror movies, uh, and I already watched Terrifier, the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, and seeing that audition, we, we just looked at a website called Actors Access, and my dad was like, Wait, Terrifier two? No way! They're doing auditions. They're making a second one, <laughs> and uh, we they, he submitted me for it, and I did uh, one self tape, uh, and then I did an in person, and then another self tape, and then another in person. Right. And the last in person audition was at the producer Phil's house, and that was probably one of the most nerve wracking experiences of my entire life. Really? Why uh, is that? Because it was it was like more of like almost like a table read. And I really, like I said, I love movies and I love acting and I love horror and I love Terrifier. So mm -hmm. doing an audition at the producer's house, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, and I just simply cared. I really, I really do care about that. So I, I just right. crazy nerves. Um, <laughs> but it went well. So I ended up getting Obviously. the part. Yeah, that's... Uh, that was the second time I met Lauren. Uh, Lauren was at the first in person and then the second in person. Uh, and she was already treating me like a big, uh, like her little brother. Uh, she was definitely my big sis right from the get go. Uh, because, you know, sometimes the table reads will throw in another scene that like maybe you weren't prepared for. Like, oh, you know, let's just try this one. Read this one. She's like, oh, let me go, go over it with him for a little bit, whatever. And then we'd go over it and then right. I feel, feel prepared. And just go right in, dive into it. Uh, it was a great, I mean, crazy experience. It was just right. wild, surreal. So, with that being said, did you have to audition again for part three, or was that a given? It was yours. Oh no, it was a given. Uh, Jonathan returned. Jonathan returns back to Terrifier three. Gotcha. Got I'm. I'm. Uh, a little bit of years i'm sure in between or does it can or does it actually flow from halloween straight into that christmas or is it supposed to be like some maybe possibly a couple years later uh 
stuff. I think that's that's more of a Damien question. I don't know what I'm allowed to say about Terrifier Three. Right. Uh, all I can say is that, yes, it is a Christmas film. Mm-hmm. Uh, gonna be crazy. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Roebuck as Santa. That's um, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I was thrilled to see him in there. So I I have when I was doing uh, strictly audio podcasting, I did interview Damien um, and. Awesome. And uh, and David both separately. Um, now, of course, trying to get them nowadays is like pulling teeth. It's it's hard to catch up with anybody. Um, what was it like working with the two of them on set, or even just oh. off set? I always see that you see pictures of you guys at conventions, having a great time. But as far as on set, how is it? On set, awesome time. Uh, Damien definitely has a his vision. He's a great director. Um, and working with him is fantastic. I would do any Damien film uh, that, you know, he's he's great. Uh, and then uh, also seeing Damien do all the special effects. Uh, now he has like a team with him for mm-hmm. Terror for 3. And of course, watching that was fantastic too. But, but seeing Damien do it in the, the second film, it was cool to see like a director that also worked on the special effects and did the makeup and stuff. It was really interesting to see. Uh, and then David, I mean, he's the best, really funny, really fun to work with on set. And he can, he kind of just snaps like right into Art the Clown. And mm-hmm. then when it's cut, he's back to being him good, his good old self, you know, doing fart jokes and stuff. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, he's the coolest. <laughs> Have, has he ever boarded, so, like, ever? I'm, I'm sure there's probably an outtake or something somewhere where, you know, obviously Art the Clown does not speak at all. Mm-hmm. And then to obviously see him on set talking has got to be kind of interesting to see. Yeah. You know, I mean, does that make sense what I'm trying to get through? Because, you know, if mm-hmm. I were to walk up on stage one day and you guys are filming and I'm just watching and whether he he goofs up or somebody goofs up and all of a sudden he just kind of looks around and just starts talking, I would, I, I would, I don't know, I would just be something that I think would be hysterical to see. Just because it he's so accustomed funny. to not hearing him say a word, but wow, when he does get into character, I got to tell you, man, he um, he nails it. Yes. I mean, he is genuinely creepy. Some of those <laughs> looks that he gives, and with all that being said, how does it feel to be a part of what has become one of the? Oh. Uh, it is now a major horror horror film. It is a major iconic slasher film. You know, you've got your Jasons, you got your Freddies, you got your Michael Myers. You now have Art the Clown is up there. How does it feel to be a part of something like that? You didn't just do a small indie film. You didn't just do a horror movie. You did one that was not only in the theaters, which is a huge accomplishment on its own. You know, you are a part of something that is huge. It's uh, it's it. It doesn't honestly. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Maybe in like twenty or thirty years, you can ask that question, and I'll be like, you know what? You know, it was a crazy time back then. But I feel like I, I I just can't wrap my head around it. Honestly, right. it's just. Surreal. It's just it's just weird, especially since I'm a huge, like I said, I'm a huge horror fan, and mm-hmm. I grew up watching those films that you said all the classic slashers and stuff. So seeing Terrifier two take, I mean, be in theaters, and I, I think I saw it in theaters like five or six times, right? And every time it was filled with fun reactions and ah and ew and <laughs> ah, like. It was like an experience, like a movie experience I've never had in my life. And it's just weird. It's just really weird. Sure. <laughs> and crazy. Uh, so hopefully it's someday. Someday I'll wrap my head around it. I don't know. Well, how is it dealing with the newfound notoriety that Elliot Fullman now carries as a celebrity? Um, I don't see myself as a celebrity at all. I, I appreciate just, that. I, I'm just another. I'm just another fan. I'm just another, uh, just somebody that likes art a lot. Right. Art the clown and just art in general, sure. so like films right. and stuff. 
Uh, so if, I mean, like at horror cons or whatever, I just like to talk. I like to talk to fans. I like to talk about horror movies. I, I, I find it fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like it's just like, you know, it's a fun topic to talk about, you know, hang out, hang out with people. All of uh, us horror nerds and just shoot it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's like a, you know, a horror new- nerd, uh, party. <laughs> <laughs> I and you know and I I felt so awkward actually taking the time if your mother hadn't walked up behind me I already knew you guys were I saw all of you walking into the store because I had pulled crazy. in because I had pulled into the gas pumps and if your mom had I kind of walked in and, and I looked around and obviously I saw Josie's hair from from across the across the room and if your mom hadn't come up behind me at the cash register and I kind of looked back and said hello and I was like you're Elliot's mom, you know, like playing dumb with her, obviously, because I knew who she was. I knew who you were. And then, you know, you just guys had just come up. It was, um, you know, we weren't in a convention, you know, you're in your private, yeah. private little bubble of your life, your world, doing your family thing. And then, you know, here's this guy, oh, dude, what's up? You know, and it was just, it was very awkward for me, but in it, you saw how small of an area this is that I lived in as you were passing through. That doesn't happen around here ever. Perfect timing. And, and it was timing. because, you know, because like I said, I've been trying to reach out to you through certain social media platforms for yeah. quite some time now. Um, trying to reach through and nobody gets them or they don't read them or somebody else is reading it for them. Uh, you know, and so meeting you then allowed today to happen. So I'm I'm very thankful for that. And again, me, I appreciate your time. I me really too. Am. I'm thankful too. Now we're hanging out. Now exactly. we're having our own horror nerd party <laughs> right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, my uh, my son has actually listened to you. My wife and I both enjoy your music. He's a he's a oh. wanting to be musician as well. Oh, nice. And uh, I was mentioning to him about our interview today. He's like, well, tell him I'm, I'm only like two hours away if he ever wants to get together and play. I was like, I'm sure he gets that from a lot of people, bud. He's like, well, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> what instrument does he play? What's that? What instrument does he play? Uh, good guitar. Oh, awesome. Yeah. 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 He's trying to do a little one man thing, kind of uh, very similar to what you're doing. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... With your music, and I'm not trying to do the interview strictly on on horror and terrifier because I don't want to take away from who you are. Um, your music's great. Thank you. V- the lyrics are really, really deep. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, very emotional uh, to the point where, and I ask you this because I know that you are a huge music fan. Um, I, from my understandings and the pictures that I see of you with your family, you were probably raised in a house that had a music playing almost all the time. Your parents probably grew up going to a lot of concerts in the New Jersey, New York area. So a lot of club shows, cause I see that you have a passion for vinyl, which I absolutely adore. But I'm listening to some of your 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 lyrics, and I'm like, God, if I could get this boy together with the likings of uh, some of New York's finest of the band Life of Agony, if you're familiar with them. Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh my God! That'd be cool. As soon That'd as be I cool. as soon as I listen to it, that's that's pretty much I was listening to. I'm not okay. Oh, nice. And that's exactly who I thought about. Um. That's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I mean, if you think if you were to honestly put on like like maybe their first album, especially River Runs Red, and mm-hmm. listen to the lyrics or just read through it, and then put their sound with your lyrics, it just works with me. It just it, you are their unplugged version. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense. Nice. I don't know. Um. Oh boy, I had a, I had a, a whole list of stuff here I wanted to talk to you about. So dealing with music, um, three albums, three years. You don't get m- most major signed bands doing that kind of work. 
<laughs> and here you are 20 years old and you're touring on your own. And I'm assuming, uh, little punk people, you are your own, um, uh, you are releasing your own work, correct? Yes, I did one album with a indie label, okay. uh, Kill Rock Stars, who, uh, I mean, they, they're fantastic, really great people. Um, I mean, they have my favorite artist like, ever. They did albums with him, Elliot Smith, uh, Bikini Kill. I mean, fantastic artists, legendary artists. Um, but we, we just, it was like a mutual agreement that I feel like, like for the next the next album that uh we kind of just go our separate ways but we still love each other everybody at kill rock stars really wonderful beautiful people uh we just you know this day and age in terms of making indie music and me making music at home mm -hmm. like the the second album was a studio album this most recent one was back at home so the first one and the third album both uh recorded at home it's almost like you know it's just if I'm being self-released or whatever, uh, I mean, I don't need a crazy budget or anything, you know, right. I, I, right. Uh, you know, I'm not doing like this grand crazy recording or anything. Um, but yeah, releasing music three straight years, three straight albums. <laughs> uh, <I'm> impressive. <laughs> thank you. Uh, hopefully in 10 years, there's like 10, 10 more albums. Right. Uh, that's the goal. Keep. Like, I mean, a, I mean, do you have it up there? Oh, like have like have my ideas planned. You, do you think you've got enough to keep going oh, with that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I love making music. I like if it was my choice, I I would make music every single day. Right. Uh, I mean, I just made a new. I wrote and recorded fully a whole new song just yesterday. <laughs> um, but I I I do like making music. It's just fun. It's fun to me. Sure. Uh, it, like I like it, you were saying, I grew up listening to music, like listening to records, collecting vinyl, listening right. to all sorts of different bands and artists and stuff. So it's just like, if I'm not making music, I feel like, what am I doing? What am right. I doing? Wasted a day. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of music, what is? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to mix this one kind of with Terrifier too. Uh, your bedroom set. Oh yeah. Were any of those band posters actually yours? Yes, actually. I wish I was in my room right now. I'm in my parents' room because Josie's painting in there, but I'd be able to show you a lot of those posters and, and some of the records and stuff were mine. Like uh, the King Diamond poster was mine. I know that was... Oh, yeah. man, I'd love I grew that. up... I, that, that album, I mean, and that poster has been in my room like ever since I can remember. Right. Um uh, what what else is in there? The my Metallica record that's signed mm -hmm. is in there. Right. My Slayer record that's signed is in there. I think yes, the I saw that record. one. That killed me. <laughs> that yeah. you know, I mean, first time I saw um, a, 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 an an inkling of a, a teaser, even for Terrifier Two, I saw a real quick glimpse of you. Huh. I recognized the glasses, and instantly I had a flashback to years ago. And I'm watching this damn kid interviewing all of my music idols <laughs> that was about this tall. And here you are, man. I tell you what, I cannot congratulate you enough because I will be the first to admit, yes, I was jealous of you and still am because I have been trying to track some of those guys down. I've been lucky enough throughout the years, if they've come to town to possibly get photo press passes nice but not been able to actually get any one-on-one -on -one interview time with, with with the likings of um well i mean hell you did tom um yes. uh who i would absolutely love to talk to nowadays and obviously with phil and just anybody you're very very fortunate i don't know how you did it i don't but man congratulations to that because that is just amazing Thank you so much. Thank you for all for all the support and the, all the kind words. Wow, of course. Um, what? Um, who's your all time favorite band? Oh, that's yeah. fun. I know. I know you have a very very wide range of music interests. I do. That's why I ask. And this can be of any any genre. 
And c- is it okay if it's just a single artist or full sure. on? Band? I'm like, can um, I name a couple? Yeah, I can name a few. I can name a few. Okay, uh, we're talking just artists and just songwriting. Elliot Smith. Uh, I was out. I mean, I was named after him, but his music. I feel like in terms of song crafting and songwriting, he's one of the very, very best. Um, and then I have to go for full on band Radiohead. I love. I love. I had Radiohead. a feeling you were going to say that. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying that. I'm looking at. I got to see them live at uh, Madison Square Garden. I'm looking at a tour poster right now, and I even have a Radiohead tattoo. Bam. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, but. What else? I'll name like two more. I'll name like two more. Otherwise, I would talk about talk about music for like <laughs> eight years. Um, Queen, I have to give them one of the slots. They're my top top. They will ever always be in my top like four or five artists because they were one of the bands that got me into music. Mm-hmm. Like listening to Queen as a little kid, going you know on a car drive or whatever with my dad. You turn on you know that phantom of the opera or night at the a- opera not phantom, <laughs> a night at the opera album and oh my gosh so fantastic one of the greatest voices one of the greatest ranges i mean like brian may that guitar tone oh, my God. oh yeah. yeah and then last slot it's always the hardest for me to do that i'm gonna throw in a band that i feel is very underrated and overlooked they're decently big uh, but they're called Sunny Day Real Estate. Uh, such an underrated band. I feel like they made some of the best albums of like the 90s, like the late 90s, like how it feels to be something on that album. I feel like they should be as big as Nirvana, okay? <laughs> That's just my opinion. They are so good. One of my favorite vocalists ever. Every There's zero filler. Every single second, every drum beat, every note is perfect. I love that band. So nice. that, that would be like my top my top four. Okay. So stranded on an island. You can <laughs> only have one album to listen to forever. Okay. You know, the Ellen Smith. Again, through- any 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 genre, any any one, just one LP that you could take with you. All right. I honestly uh I love the Elliot Smith Either or album. I love it. I've listened to that album. So many times, but I don't know if I would go with it. That's my favorite album. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I'm stranded on an island, I would want a variety of different songs. Sure. Uh, and this isn't even my favorite Radiohead album, but I would go, it's my second favorite. I would go In Rainbows, mainly because it's just got such a wide range of just different songs and influences. It has the really lo-fi acoustic stuff that I love and the music that, you know, inspires me to make music. Uh, but then they, they have some crazy fun beats, like crazy Aphex twin electronic stuff. But then they have some like rock songs on there too. Like just like mm. fantastic distorted guitars. It's just a really good range of music. Uh, so I would go with in rainbows from Radiohead. Okay. Very nice. All right. Um, <laughs> What uh, what lies next for acting? Oh, what lies next? I don't know. I have no clue. I wish. I mean, uh, have you have? Is there anything out there that you're looking to that you've thrown your name into, audition wise or considering? Oh, I, I mean, with the one thing with acting, so a lot of the stuff isn't in my power. If it was in my power, I'd be acting all the time. I would be on a set tomorrow if I could. You know, sure. Uh, a lot of it is just. A lot of acting is is waiting, waiting to get an audition, waiting to hear back if you get the role. Uh, it's not fully in my control. But I did do uh, another indie horror film. I don't know when it's going to be coming out or when it's planning on being released. It's an anthology horror film. It's called The Pitchfork Retreat. It was pretty fun filming that one. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll get into another film or something soon. No, oh, that would be that would be definitely be great. Um, uh, I, would love- <laughs> I, I I want to mention to you, and I'm I don't know if you knew about this, um, an actress by the name of Carrie Maguire. She's oh, a, uh- so you do remember? Her. Okay, <laughs> she actually runs a uh, a Facebook page. Um, uh, was it the 
art. I think it's art, art appreciation. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. So I wasn't. I wasn't quite sure if you were, if you were in that or not, or if you knew of it. Um, yep. But I thought it would be kind of neat if you had a second just to kind of give a shout out to them because she oh, is yeah. just she is just die hard and and always pushing everything that um, that between you and anybody involved in the film ever has anything to do with. So uh, yeah. great, great lady. Um, that honestly is is going to be wrapping everything up from us today um i oh, am wow. unfortunately starting to run out of time um well, i definitely want to thank you for everything Th thank you for your time um i'm so grateful to have run into you uh yeah. and bombarded you at a convenience store on your personal time it was not no no no, no you it, it was it was totally cool it was no bombarding it wasn't really i mean we're hanging out. It was, you know, like any time. If any anybody that sees this or whatever sees me in public, don't be afraid. I'm cool to hang out. I'm cool to talk. We're chilling. We're hanging out. You know, it's fun. I'm glad I met you at that store. I'm glad we're doing this interview. Let's do this interview. Tell well, us talking it, some more. It, it's it's definitely appreciated. It, it truly is. Um, I appreciate you. Well, thank you, and uh, definitely send your send my best to your, to your folks. They seem like great people, <laughs> and uh, thank uh, you. And also, obviously, give our best to Josie. Um, I would love to be able to talk to you again sometime. Anything uh, anything that? happens, comes up, you want to push or promote, please. And if you're ever down my way again, doing a show. Please reach out to me personally. I would love suit me an email. I would love to come see you. Oh yeah, I, I'm down. I'm down. Baltimore, oh, DC, Jersey, you know the whole. You know how close the whole tri-state area is. Yep, I, I live in Jersey. I, I know. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. I got the East Coast, the tri-state area. It's in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> also, I forgot to say it. Shout out to Arthur Clown Appreciation Society and Carrie McGuire. There you go. There you go. I'm sure she'll love hearing from you. All right, you guys, that is going to wrap it up today. Uh, Mr. Elliot Fullman. Fulham, excuse me, I keep saying Fullman. Uh, I'm, oh, no I'm getting I'm getting old here. Um, outside of Terrifier 2, Terrifier 3, be sure to look into the man, the musician. There he is. <laughs> Elliot, thank you so much for your time. Give all my best to everybody, and I wish you all the best with everything, all your new endeavors, and I hope to talk to you soon. Boys and girls, please hit the subscribe button down below. Check me out on all social media platforms. I'm John Roislin. Again, thank you for joining us on the Witching Hour podcast, and as always, keep it evil. Talk to you guys soon. Once I hit I this button it. and get rid of us. Arr, 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 wait, arr, Keep arr. it evil.